Hey, what's up everybody? This is Todd Bowen. Welcome to today's video, Good Posture Habits for Computer Users. These are just some of the habits that I've been practicing lately, not all of them. Uh, my content is not medical advice. It's based off my experience and my opinions. Quick note here, I talk about good habits that have helped me live a higher quality sedentary lifestyle. Do your own research, make good decisions, and be the best advocate possible for your own healthcare. Uh, one last note, nothing in this video is paid promotion. I'm not compensated by any of the manufacturers that I might mention or, the, or their products. Uh, I paid my own money for these products, I'm going to mention, uh, which have all helped improve my computer posture. Uh, so here's the list here. Uh, the first one we're gonna talk about is grounding. I'm not an expert on this. Uh, I can't really speak to the science of it, but uh, I do, I, I, I heard all these people talking about grounding. Uh, and how beneficial it is for our muscles and, and tendons and tissues and all that stuff. Um, and I thought about when the last time was that my feet actually touched the ground, aside from maybe taking a walk on the beach. Uh, and it had been like years. This was last year that I was thinking about this. It had been years since the last time. I couldn't even remember the last time my feet touched the ground. So anyway, I started practicing, uh, I started exercising uh, barefoot out on grass um, and it's made a big difference. At first, last summer when I did it, I went to, one thing I wanna mention, uh, I went to this park that was right on the river, surrounded by a lot of tall buildings, and I didn't really notice any difference in, in working out or, or actually touching the ground. But I was thinking about it, and that, that park is kind of like a development. So I bet you that that dirt, even though the, it's a beautiful park with grass and dirt and all that stuff, I bet you it's probably not even connected rooted in the earth. It's probably some kind of concrete in between all that grass uh, and, and the earth. So anyway, I moved on to an older park, uh, which you could just tell this park's been there forever. It's not, a, it's not a big development or anything. It's just an old big field of grass. Um, and I could definitely tell a difference there within a couple of days, mainly in my ankles. I know I've talked about my ankles a lot. Uh, I've had three ankle surgeries. And I think a lot of that was, the, the need for those surgeries was caused by sitting at a computer um, with, <clears throat> with my feet not flat on the floor. It just caused a lot of repetitive strain and overuse throughout my lower leg uh, and joint dysfunction in my ankle. So anyway, the biggest notice, the biggest difference that I noticed when I started grounding and exercising on a grass field barefoot was my ankles were working better. Things were moving better um, and it was starting to loosen up and the, the tissues in there weren't quite as tight. Uh, cold bath. I just took a cold bath this morning. I know those things are, are, are popular. Um, and I, it took me a long time to get into it. When I first started, uh, it was, it was painful. My whole, the whole left side of my body would seize up because I, I, I when it comes to repetitive strain and overuse, I'm kind of dominant on my left side of my body, holding my phone, holding the steering wheel, holding the keyboard, um, in the past. So anyway, uh, I started off with cold showers and my whole body would seize up when, when that cold water would hit. So then I kind of uh, gradually, um, I, I, I did more of a cool shower instead of a cold shower. Um, so anyway, I started with the temperature. Uh, you know, it's hard to say what the temperature was of the shower, but with the bath, my temperature was not really that cold at all. It was, it was like 70 degrees. And, I, and when the water is, is warm like that, um, you can stay in there longer and you still get some benefits. Like it, that helped me um, get acclimated to the colder water that I'm doing now. This morning was 53 degrees, which is very cold for me. Might not be cold for a lot of people, but I haven't been doing them very long. Um, so yeah, 53 degrees was very, very cold for me this morning. Uh, I did about a minute and a half, um, but that was rough. Uh, anyway, and, and all I do, I don't have a big fancy ice uh, plunge or anything like that. I just use a regular bathtub and I'll take a storage container like this. It's a six quart storage container, fill it up with water. And then overnight and the next morning, I'll leave it for about 24 hours in the freezer. And then the next morning, it's just this huge block of ice. So uh, I'll just throw it into the bathtub. It's not, it's not a big production or anything. It's, it's gotten pretty, pretty simple because I used to you know, run to the store to get a bag of ice, which got uh, pretty, pretty tiring. Um, and my ice machine in my freezer is just not gonna put out that enough ice to get that water temperature down. But those things have helped me out a lot. Um, uh, and again, it's, it's the, my main motivation is how I feel, not how I look or how strong I am or how far I can run. Um, and I feel a lot better after I've been doing those. I've been doing them for a few months now. Uh, and that has definitely helped out my posture and my energy. 
Sunbathing uh, in a very moderate uh, way. Last summer was the first year that I really started sunbathing consistently and my vitamin D levels went through the roof. And I take like a, a vitamin D supplement too, but from what I understand, I'm no nutrition expert, but from what I understand, um, when vitamin D goes through your system and through your digestive system, it loses a lot that it gives to the body. So actually getting it through the sun uh, can be a lot more effective, a lot more effective, and it definitely was a lot more effective in my experience. But when I do it, I don't do it long. It's more about <clears throat> 15 to 20 minutes laying on my back and then 15 to 20 minutes laying on my stomach, and that's it. Um, no sunscreen or anything like that, but only being out there for 15 or 20 minutes. I haven't had an issue burning. Um, and last summer I did it about five days a week. I would, I would estimate during the summer and my vitamin D levels went higher than they've been, uh, in a long time. And I could tell, I could feel a lot different. I could feel a lot better. Uh, this year I didn't, I didn't get out there quite as much, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but it was uh, a big difference to sunbathe, to have the ability to walk out to the pool in my building, um, 15 to 20 minutes on my back, 15 to 20 minutes on my stomach, and that definitely helped raise my vitamin D levels a lot. When the supplement really wasn't, wasn't, wasn't getting it done, um, I've tried multiple vitamin D supplements, but sunbathing has definitely helped my posture out a lot. All right, this is not, not paid promotion, like I mentioned earlier in being this video, but Athletic Greens, I finally got on them. I've been hearing about them for years. Um, but I used to eat vegetables and you know stuff like that. Uh, I do still eat some vegetables, but not nearly as much since I've started eating a lot more red meat. Um, so I wanted to get on Athletic Greens because I've heard a lot of very smart people talking about how good they are, how helpful they are, and they've definitely helped my energy levels uh, a lot. Uh, I just put it in a little bit of water in the morning. Um, and it's a, it's a green powder that you put in the water. It doesn't taste great, but it doesn't taste terrible either. Um, and I also add some collagen protein, which leads us to the next item on the list. Also add some collagen protein to that same drink, to that same glass of water. Um, and it does it, it takes away the intensity of the, the green powdery uh, feel of the athletic greens when you add, want to add a little bit of collagen protein in there. Um, collagen protein, uh, here's an Instagram account that I want to mention. This is a great Instagram account, Dr. James D. Nicolantonio. Dr. James D I N I C is where he is on Instagram. Man, he I've learned a ton from him, especially about um, collagen and these next uh, um, uh, minerals or ingredients we're going to talk about uh, next uh, next few lines. Uh, but anyway, collagen protein is something um, that he, we'll just, we'll just read from what he says. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the body. It's the glue that holds everything together. Uh, it makes up our skin, bone, teeth, hair, nails, etc all that stuff. So uh, as I've gotten older into my mid forties and sitting at a computer desk for many years, uh, repetitive strain is, is, is tough on the muscles and the tissues um, and tendons and stuff like that. That's why I was interested in, in collagen protein was uh, mainly for ankle recovery. The company that I use their um, protein is Bubs Collagen. And to be honest, they just had really good marketing. And every, every time I saw an ad from them, it was a testimonial of somebody who really, really um, believed in, in, in uh, how, how much the product has helped them. Um, one guy had like an ACL tear and he had surgery and he was taking like two doses of collagen a day. Um, and he just talked about how much quickly, how quickly he healed uh, compared to his doctor's estimates. Um, so collagen protein has helped me out a lot. Again, not, not compensated by Bubs Naturals at all. Uh, it's, it's a product that I paid my own money for and it's helped me out a lot. Uh, the next three items, magnesium, glycine, and inositol. Going back to Dr. James C. Nicolantonio, he talks a lot about these three. Uh, magnesium calms your mind, improves your sleep, increases your energy. He also talks about how it's probably one of the most minerals that we're lacking. Um, glycine and inositol, here's a sleep stack that he recommends. Uh, again, big shout out to him and his Instagram page. I've learned so much from his page. I wanted to uh, talk about him. Definitely go follow him uh, if you're into uh, supplements and stuff like that. Um, theanine, I've never tried that yet. Uh, I've heard a couple of different people talking about it. Um, I haven't tried it. I don't feel like I need help with my focus, um, sleep obviously, but I, I just haven't got into that yet. Um, inositol, I take a powder 
that I got off of Amazon that has both inositol and glycine in it. Um, you can see here it says uh, relaxation and deep sleep. Glycine lowers body temperature, fall asleep faster, and better quality sleep. Um, and I used to have a big issue when I would wake up in the middle of the night to use the restroom, I would just not fall back to sleep. Every time I woke up, I knew I wasn't going back to sleep for an hour and a half, two hours, and it really took a toll on me. Um, so I started drinking this. What I do is about an hour before bed, I will take um, a small glass of water. Uh, I'll pour some liquid magnesium in there. I get that, that's made by Blue Bonnet. I get that off Amazon, it's not expensive. I'll pour that in there. And then I'll put a scoop of the powder of glycine and inositol in there. Um, and then I'll also put a scoop of creatine, which I just started. I'm not prepared to talk about that because I didn't, I didn't think about mentioning that in this list. Um, but again, this list is not comprehensive. This is just some of the recent habits that I've started um, that improve my computer posture. Uh, I may do like a part two, part three of this. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But I do have many other habits that have definitely directly helped uh, my computer posture. Uh, because, you know, they, have you ever heard that saying, uh, abs are made in the kitchen, you know, not just made in the gym? Well, computer posture is also made in the kitchen, in the bed, in the gym. It's not just made, good computer posture is not just made when we're at our computer workstation, whether we're sitting or we're standing. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, and one more thing that I want to mention is mouth tape. Or one more last shout to Dr. James and Nicola Antonio. Learned a ton from him. Definitely an Instagram account that I recommend following. And one last thing, mouth taping at night. I don't have a piece of it here. I meant to grab it, but it's just a small piece of black tape that I put on my lips at night. Uh, it's made by a company called Hostage Tape. Um, and it, I know it sounds crazy, but sleeping with tape on my mouth has definitely helped me out a lot. Um, so I used to, uh, sleep with my mouth open. I used to be a mouth breather. I still am. If I sleep without tape tonight, I'll breathe through my mouth, but it's just a terrible habit that has caused a lot of issues in my jaw. Uh, a lot of overtension in my jaw and my mouth just eventually just stayed open. I could close it. Those muscles worked, but they wouldn't work in holding my bite, um, under normal circumstances like breathing at night. Um, and I think that also caused a lot of issues with headaches, tension headaches in the back of my head, uh, overusing those jaw muscles. So uh, what I started doing is taping my mouth at night. I started off with athletic tape, just your basic white athletic tape. That didn't work too great, um, but at least it was, it, it, it was a good start uh, because once you use this hostage tape, uh, it, it really stays on there. Um, and breathing in and it's like, it like, it's easier to allow me to breathe in and out through my nose only. Um, and there's tons of other benefits that I can't speak to the science to of breathing through your nose at night. Um, but that one, my jaw muscles have really relaxed. All the muscles in my face have relaxed. Uh, and those muscles are really, really small and tight. Um, they can get really, really tense. So that's going to cause issues in other parts of the body, like in our neck, uh, into our shoulders, um, uh, traps and stuff like that. Um, so that's it for today's video. Good posture habits for computer users. We'll go through them again one more time. Grounding, working out with feet on the grass, bare feet on the grass, cold bath, sunbathing, just 15 to 20 minutes on the front, 15 to 20 minutes on the back. But the key is to do it consistently. I've done that uh, during the summer. I try to do it like four to five times a week. Athletic greens combined with collagen protein in the morning. At night, magnesium, glycine, and inositol, uh, and then mouth taping uh, while I sleep. Uh, these are all recent habits I've started that have improved my computer posture that I wanted to share with you guys. So that's it for today's video, good posture habits for computer users. I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you've made it this far, congratulations. Uh, you're taking a big step forward in improving your life, and that's definitely something to be proud of. Uh, sign up for free email updates if you want. That's the best way to keep up with all my content. Sittingposture.com slash newsletter. Uh, my newsletter is called Computer Posture Weekly. Uh, it comes out once a week on Fridays. Uh, I don't spam or sell email addresses. I just send one email a week. Um, and that email will contain uh, a link to the article on my website as well as two links to the YouTube videos that I posted to my channel that week. And you can unsubscribe at any time. Um, you know, just by clicking a couple buttons at any of the emails, you can share it easily with your friends and family members who sit at a computer desk for a living. Uh, and also if you 
got something from this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see my videos in your feed more often, that helps me out a ton. I appreciate you guys, the more people that see my videos and articles, uh, the more I have the ability to create more content. So that's it. Thanks guys, this is Todd Bowen from Sitting Posture. Appreciate you guys watching, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.